All right, we are finally getting into the actual seven levels of intimacy. Uh, the first six chapters that we have gone through have led up to this point. We are in the book called The Seven Levels of Intimacy by Matthew Kelly. And hopefully you guys have heard some good takeaways already in terms of relationships, which I, I think is, is easy. So whether you've read it or you're listening to the audiobook, really easy, really good book to, to have. So let's jump into chapter seven. Yes. What is the first level? It would be cliche. So we're going we're gonna to give you an example. Here yeah. we go. How was your day? Good. How there was your you day? <laughs> Fine. All right. <laughs> Cliche, right? But really, right? Um, he says this is our most casual conversation, our most casual encounter that basically reveal very little about yourself, can be fleeting and superficial. Now, some people really like that. You know, they like to um, kind of hang out there. Hang out there. Yeah. Some people don't necessarily like to hang out there, which I, I'm not a very cliche kind of person. I prefer not to have a cliches, but he gives actually some good reasons on on how it is at least a starting point. Yeah, like right? if you're talking to the guy in the grocery store or the bank teller or whomever you would consider an acquaintance, you're probably not going to ask me, hey, tell me how your marriage is, right? You're not going right. to lead with that. Right. You're going to lead with cliche. And yeah. I love the way he has, a, he has a really good way. This is a really good book. And, and as I've been listening ahead, by the way, it really has a nice recovery tie in. It does. Especially as you get more and more. Very much so. Um, excellent book. Highly recommend this. But um, cliches, they're very important. It helps us mm -hmm. to get to know, um, at least become comfortable. Maybe not get to know a person. Right. But. It's, it's a little bit beyond a, a handshake, and uh, it makes you feel comfortable enough, hopefully, to inspire you to learn more about them. Yeah, and a starting point, because obviously people need to build trust. They need to build connection more, more time as well. You're not going to tell a complete stranger you're, well, some people do, but uh, most don't. Um, he does call this, I, I was just checking, he calls it a transaction, kind of. Yes, it's supposed yes. to be kind of just a very right. simple exchange to see how, how it feels to be in that transaction with one another. And he does say relationships definitely need, need to be more dynamic collaboration, which I, I think is a great, a great definition of a relationship in terms of partnership and things like that. Um, but, it, but it does create that initial you might call it a spark or lack thereof. Yes. Um, if you want to continue, if each of you want to continue the conversation, so yeah. it does kind of help you be able to be, uh, you know, kind of try it out with being without being too committed. Yeah. As well. Now, he says we can misuse cliches mm -hmm. if if we are already friends and you ask me how I'm doing and I regularly say fine and add nothing more, I can actually use cliches to keep you at a distance. Right. He does say, and the primary word he uses is safe. Cliches are super safe because you don't actually have to reveal anything. In fact, when you say fine, you may not actually be truly fine right, or, right. Good, or good. And, and so a lot of people hang out at the cliche level, even with people that they want to be close with. That's right. Because they're they're wanting safety when in fact that's kind of a false false safety, isn't it? Yes. So Yeah. Um, he gets in in this chapter to how can we move beyond cliches and he gives some very specifics. The one he talks about a lot is carefree timelessness. Yep. And I, I like that. It's a mouthful. Um, and he mentions it several times, but carefree timelessness can help us move beyond cliches. Mm -hmm. And so he explains how important it is that we spend time together without an agenda. It's okay to spend time together, of course, we do it all the time mm -hmm. with an agenda, but we need to spend time with people without an agenda. And he talks about when he used to, he was one of 
seven, I believe. Seven boys, yeah. seven. Yeah. And his mom would take him to the art museum and they, they were going to do something, but the agenda was pretty wide open and he just mm -hmm. remarked how meaningful it was just to have this wide open time. Yeah. Uh, with his parents, and he remembers that. Even though I was, I caught. He said, he said, I don't know how often we did that. It may have even been once a year. Yeah. He remarked. <laughs> but it was so meaningful to him. That they but it was so meaningful because of the impact, right? Because it wasn't. And he talks about making sure that it's not urgent. Mm -hmm. You know, because oftentimes when we are preoccupied or distracted with the urgent, we don't actually get to the most important things, which requires. A carefree timelessness. That's right. When we're just going to talk, you know, about our, our thoughts, our feelings. I remember we, and he does say this too, we we actually planned that lunch together where we just sat and we talked about different things. Yes. Sharing some different things on our mind and it wasn't about CR, it wasn't yeah. about um, the next task or responsibility that we had to take care of. And so it wasn't the urgent things, but it left. But but when you're not in the urgent, it leaves room to actually kind of unpack some things that that maybe you've just been sitting there and you're just kind of letting it out at that point. Yeah. So he does say carefree timelessness doesn't mean that you don't plan it. Right. Though it means that you're planning a specific time that is not an agenda. You know that we're gonna. You know, we're gonna plan a time to talk about CR. You know, that's that's planned. Yeah. Whereas it might be either a walk or a meal where there's room, extra room before, during, and after, after to actually do something else, maybe. Yes. Um, but mostly so that you connect. Yes. In conversation, connecting in your feelings, those kind of those that kind of time. Yeah, and he says the first thing you need to do is schedule it. Yeah. So you schedule the. The time slot, mm -hmm. but you don't schedule um, moment by moment what you're going to do yeah. in that time slot. I, I actually was talking to a woman yesterday about it. In fact, she said to me, "You know, when my kids were in middle school and high school, she had to very intentionally plan out the time to pick up her kids from school mm. because." to her when they got in the car and there was just enough driving time and she wasn't asking questions all some I, she started that and they would just kind of start talking to her and that was her way yeah. of knowing what was happening yes. in their world yes you know and she made it very intentional throughout those teenage years she had to do it That's because right. she knew that she needed to connect in a very you know kind of a neutral ground which is a lot of times when you're driving or when you're walking you know those kind of movements yeah because you, you know, think about it too it's not this necessary it could be right but being right. in a car walking you're yeah. facing you're both facing the same direction yeah yeah he also brings up the point that carefree timelessness can lead to what he calls lightheartedness right and makes an excellent option observation he says all great things can only be achieved with a light heart mm -hmm. and light-heartedness is the fruit of carefree timelessness yeah I thought that was excellent yeah in other words are we having fun yeah together or are we relaxed at least yes you know or is there a, right like when I do take walks with my wife sometimes there can be silence and sometimes there can be conversation mm -hmm. but there it can but it doesn't have to be something specific, you know, it's not planned. And I think a lot of times it's, it, it moves us to that place of lowering our guard, kind of letting the walls drop a little bit. And that is extremely important if you really want to get to the heart of the matter. Right. Which is interesting because it's saying lightheartedness. Yes. Um, but those times do produce a lightheartedness yes. because you're not carrying around something that's very heavy either. So. Yeah. So again, this is all under the first level of intimacy, which is <clears throat> cliche, but he does encourage us to move beyond cliche, and we can do that through spending this time together. Mm -hmm. And then in spending that time together, lightheartedness right. comes from it. 
I, I think from what I've seen from just this first chapter or first level chapter is that he's he lays out the level cliche, but then he in each of these chapters and in the next one too, you can see where he's kind of also defining better ways at going about relationship too. Yeah. So on one hand there's cliche, but on the on the other hand he's saying okay, but remember, carefree timelessness lightheartedness mm. you know those plans uh are are a different way of going to accomplish a healthy relationship as That's well right. so all right great chapter really enjoyed it yep and then we'll be on to the next one see you next time see you next time